We're going to go ahead and get started. Just um, a couple of things. I know we have some people coming late. Um, Joe Contapio is coming a little bit later. Uh, he was at a meeting. So we've got a few people that are coming a little bit late. We've got a bunch of concerts going on. There's a concert at Allendale and a concert at Westdale um, at the South High School. So we're kind of, we're going to be missing a few people here and there. I know Joe Farr is out of town learning about lighting, so how to save us money. So he's in New Jersey. Um, but a couple of announcements um, to get us going. Uh, first of all, our, our second and last school tour will be on Saturday. Um, it will be, we'll be meeting here at 9 a.m. And uh, we'll be returning at 2 p.m. And what we'll be visiting will be the high schools and um, the middle schools. So um, along with the bus garage. So if you have an opportunity on Saturday, if you could just let me know one way or another, um, if you're coming, it will be helpful just so that we can, um, Ed can take care of uh, lunch and, and, and so forth of how many people um, will be coming for that. We visited the elementary schools on Saturday and lo and behold, we walked out of Allendale and I think it was five to two. We were right on the money. So uh, that was fabulous. I think that it was very um, informative for those of us that had an opportunity to see the schools. Many of us had been in lots of buildings before, but maybe not the whole building. Um, I realized on the tour, I'd never been in Allendale. So I was um, happy to be able to do that. We saw some great similarities and we also saw some great differences. So um, that was a really a, a nice thing to be able to see. We're gonna talk about those um, quickly in just a minute here. A um, Couple of other things. There are dates for um, June, July, and August down here. This room books up very fast, and we do because this is a um, public, it is a private meeting in public, so we need to have an area for our um, audience. So we need to be in this room uh, with all the equipment and so forth. So this room books up quickly, so we wanted to book out um, going into the next uh, few months here. Um, we're going to have a uh, presentation this evening by Stephen Yee, who is our um, Director of um, Technology, our technology guru here at West um, Seneca Schools. So he'll be giving us an overview of that. And then we'll be leading into some brainstorming. When we get to the brainstorming session, we'll just um, review uh, what we want our brainstorming to look like um, as far as um, what brainstorming is. And we'll just kind of try to move that through a little bit easier this, this time without maybe so many questions. Um, okay, so review of the school tours. Anybody have anything they'd like to share about what they might have saw that they liked, what they were surprised at, what they didn't like? We all had clipboards and were taking notes um, while we were in the buildings. Uh, we were shocked at how Clinton and Potter are a mirror image. It was a Brian kept telling us when we were at Clinton, but then when we actually walked into Potter's, we were like, whoa, this is really it. So, so that was pretty interesting. Anybody have anything else that they that stood out? I loved um, Clinton's library. Mm -hmm. To me, I, I, I want that library. <laughs> that was awesome. I just like the way it was set up and how they had the computer lab separate from the books and everything. It was just, it was very creative. Um, even the decorating was creative with the keyboard and stuff, loved it. You can tell that that librarian, whoever she is, loves her job. That's what I got from that. Out of all the schools, I thought that that, that really stood out to me. That was really nice. So I think literacy is really important. And right, a library is a hub like of your building, Absolutely. especially at the elementary level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else? I loved the auditorium at Winchester. It was the first yes. time I was in the auditorium, and it just, it was an awesome feel there. Um, I also love the fact that Allendale had an auditorium. So that, to me, really gave you some different opportunities um, in the uh, elementary buildings. Though I'm glad to see now that everybody, even if they don't have an auditorium, they have a cafetorium. I know when my son first started here, we didn't have anything. 
um, until the building project. So um, we're thankful for that. Uh, anything else? I was shocked to learn how little the school was originally used. Like it was open 10 years and then closed. For and the I, original purpose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ed is talking about when this building opened, it was a junior high school and it ran as a junior high school for 10 years. Then it sat vacant for a year. Then it became, if I get my, if I get my information right, it was empty for a year. Then it became a district office. Then it became an early education center with K-1s. And then it turned into West Out. So, yeah. It's like I, I could just vision the population growth and then all of a sudden. <clears throat> right, yeah. It peaked and then dropped down. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully you'll keep in mind what you saw, and we'll be able to draw from that as we um, You know what? I have to tell you, I can't believe how different everything is. I said uh, we could never qualify as like a Tim Hortons franchise. Like every school is so different. Mind-blowingly how different they are. Even the schools that were the same, completely different setups and classrooms and walls and, you know, just every, like, like their own, they're their own little environment. And I think that's really important, and I think that's one of the things, um, and I, I might be speaking a little out of turn, but I think that's one of the things that Dr. Crawford and the Board of Education has really given each building an opportunity to be individual. And I think, um, you know, I, I don't know that we necessarily want all round um, balls here. I, mean, I think sometimes it's nice to see different things and different programs and things might work better for different populations and different buildings and different staff and things like that. So you're right though, Ed, they were, it was very different to think that they're all under that West Seneca Central School umbrella. Yeah. All righty, um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and turn our um, tables and we're gonna talk to Steven, Steven's gonna talk to us and kind of talk to us of where technology is in West Seneca now, where we've come from, where we are now, and then we're gonna, um, when we start our brainstorming session, that'll be the first thing that we'll talk about is, um, and it'll be fresh on our minds, but kind of giving us an idea of you know, where we wanna go with our uh, technology piece. So, Stephen Yee, thanks for being here, thanks for joining us. Well, thank you, Lisa. And thanks for the introduction, it's a perfect um, description of how I want to approach tonight's presentation. I didn't want PowerPoint you to that, so it's going to be very casual. Describe briefly, hopefully within 20 minutes, uh, some of the, the past, the current, highlighting some of the programs we have in the district, and our future, future goals and future plans. So I joined the district back in 2003, and I came from the private sector as an IT administrator and network engineer. So previous to me, the district had to host us teachers and special assignments running the computers, the network, and so on. So when I came in right away, I looked at the needs of the district and determined that we need to really upgrade the whole infrastructure, starting with our data center. And that's one thing I'll highlight. If you can, visit Ebenezer. I'm not sure that's on your agenda for this week. We can certainly most likely if stop you there. Have a chance, yep. Ebenezer is our data center uh, part of our upgrade the network. Uh, we had switches that were very old, failing, and we had the network going down constantly. And it was um, obviously an unacceptable situation in, in interrupting classroom instruction time. So in 2004, we took the initiative to upgrade all the infrastructure during the summer. Uh, we also put in place servers, acting as servers, instead of uh, a small little back computer running as storage space. So we, you know, in, very, in a very quick time frame, we tried to upgrade, we tried to get the district up to speed um, on the data side, on the network side. Uh, the topology of our network is that, as I mentioned, everything comes up and easier. So that's kind of important when we are looking at the future use of buildings per se. If you were to consider closing down, closing down at the user, to make a similar data center with a different building, my very rough estimate is up to a million dollars. Um, uh, there was a million? You know, that's a very rough estimate of all of the infrastructure, all the wiring, all the labor involved to recreate the whole thing. What we do in our district, we, we 
what we also introduced that in 2004 was the concept of technology turnover. Um, when before that concept occurred, we had different machines in, 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 the, in the buildings at different levels of ages. Uh, so we had a situation in one classroom that would be three or four different computers, three or four different ages, and of course the ones that were always being used were a brand new one. So we introduced the concept of the turnover where all the computers in that said building, including the buildings, were replaced wholesale so that everyone had the same level, the same equipment, so there was no what we call a tech envy, uh, which was a big thing. So, you know, uh, leveling the playing field, make sure all the equipment was standardized and same in the classroom. What we also try to highlight in our, especially discussing the technology implementation in our district technology committee, is the ratio of students to student recruiters. We're proud of the fact that right now we have approximately 2.0 to 2.2 students to student computers. What that means is for every computer, that for every student, so for every computer, we have two students sharing that machine. And that's student machines specifically, and not teacher workstations, office machines. We also have um, a bunch of mobile labs, laptop computers, which we're at the, at the, at the fork of the road as far as what kind of technology do we want to introduce in our district. But I'll save that for the end of the future course. We've also embarked, and I'm sure you've seen this, uh, a project to introduce interactive whiteboards in our district. Uh, back in 2008 is when we started planning for uh, the, the concept of the interactive classrooms. The primary component being the computer board, the document camera, the audio enhancement device at the back of the room so that teachers can teach with you mic or the student can be mic if they're a soft speaker like myself. So that everyone in the room can hear you. We also have in those rooms a wall mounted controls that controls all the inputs so that it's simple for the, for the teachers to be able to use that classroom. Uh, right now, um, as of today, we have, I'm looking at my numbers, 320 interactive boards, interactive classrooms in our district. We have 470 classrooms uh, district wide. So about two thirds of our classrooms have interactive technology. What we're trying to look for, plan for the future. Um, as I mentioned, we've had lots of laptops and <coughs> But we feel that the use of laptops have sort of waned out. Um, the promise of one-to-one -one computing for laptops uh, is no longer the craze right now. The biggest hurdle we have when using laptops is the battery life of these devices. So whenever I go by classrooms, I do see laptops from the power cords and extension cables all over the floor, which is obviously not what we want in our classrooms. Um, safety wise, trip hazards, um, and just functionally, it wasn't very clean. So, you know, within the past, um, last year, the discussion occurred about you know, what kind of mobile devices we want to look at. Um, surprisingly, the recommendation of the district tech committee was to not purchase any more laptops. That kind of really so we looked at different mobile devices, we looked at the iPad, we looked at the Chromebook, we looked at uh, Windows 8 tablets, we looked at uh, Android devices, and the common consensus, because the time frame was so short in our decision making, was to go with iPads. So in the summer, we will be introducing, or we will be do taking delivery of iPads in our district. Approximately 1,100 laptops are coming into the district. The phase one of this project is to give it to the hands of teachers. So I think that's a very important part of the success of the mobile one device uh, project. Uh, I hope by next school year we'll have some training in place, with plans of training, so that the teachers can be shown how to use these devices. The first step is just to get comfortable, uh, play with it, as I call it, with playing is, is a wonderful way to learn. To figure out how it fits in their classroom, in their building, uh, and then so plan ahead to see how we can further uh, use the devices in the classrooms. 
the initial plan for the student side of things was to look at the elementary schools first, then the middle schools. Uh, this project coming up, we have a part, at least one part of mobile devices uh, planned for every building. More so for staff development purposes, and with Google teachers, we can set up a, a test lab to um, further understand or have a better feeling of how these devices will work with students. So that is the upcoming project in a kind of quick nutshell, short small, in a nutshell, what we're trying to do. Um, yes. Historically, I believe most schools uh, used Apple products and computers. Um, have, has that trend continued, or has it been taken over by PCs? And how is that? Historically, uh, maybe about 10 years ago, that was more common. Um, we did have a switch over to the Windows side, and the primary focus was economics. When we looked at the whole alternative, as I mentioned, in the seven elementary schools, we looked at 2,000 machines as needed to be replaced. And with a set finite budget, um, the decision was to switch over to the Windows side for that project. And yes, there was you know, concerns and feedback about a lot of that out there. Um, but I think we, we survived. Uh, the main thing is feedback has been more positive in that all the teachers really wanted was a workable machine. So, so going forward, going to the IPS, that's going to be an ad operating system. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying not to focus on what the operating system is, it's just a device to use. Um, who knows what the high schools will look like, who knows what the iPads, who knows what the iPads will look like in a couple of years. As it stands, we have a new version of the whole system connected as the cloud is changing. So what we're trying to focus on with the students is to learn the technology and that device as the device will change. So focusing on the, the uh, use of the cloud. I got a couple questions for you, yes. Stephen. You mentioned 1,100 laptops. Is that the amount of laptops we have district wide, or is that the number of iPads that you're purchasing? The, the upcoming 1,100 devices or 1,100 iPads coming in. Okay. It's, it wasn't meant to host a replace all the devices in the elementary schools. It's the first step in looking at a different way of computing. So I don't know if we're going to try to keep those laptops in those buildings, those school buildings that have six-year-old machines, or you know, we're going to try to uh, live with using them for one more year. That is yet to be determined. And then, how compatible are the iPads with the Promethean boards and the smart boards and things like that? Are there um, certain boards that now you have to switch to that are iPad compatible, or? Well, not, not trying to get too much into specifics, but the lab, the desktop machines or the teacher workstation will need to remain. The Prometheans will still need to be connected to the computer, the full computer, whether it be a Mac or Windows, to have that interactive ability. See, the whole advantage of the tablet is that it's you know, all day computing. That's a big stuff. So you have to plug in during the middle of the day. Um, but because of that, the functions are limited. It doesn't replace a full computer. And that's, a big, that's what I believe was in the common misnomer or misguided idea of what an iPad or any tablet would do. It's a complement computing device. It doesn't, it cannot replace the traditional computer on the whole scale. <clears throat> so with these mobile devices, we need to look at how it fits. We need to look at what is the eventual uh, plan of the deployment. Uh, I'm hoping that we go or we will pursue going with a one-to-one -one type of deployment model. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, sort of up in the air. From the feedback that I've received already, you know, we're looking at the K-1-2 grades, uh, not really needing that one-to-one -one model. Perhaps at the higher level, uh, high schools, uh, they will look different than the elementary and middle schools. And maybe in the elementary and middle schools, it will be a one-to-one -one deployment, but they stay in school. Whereas in high schools, or a certain grade level, and that's, again, to determine, they can take a home for use for school. This also means we'll at least look at uh, electronic textbooks, which we are piloting at this time. 
it also means that we need to be more family aware or more comfortable with using lower electronics instead of less paper. So more paper that's, uh, I'm sorry, less printing of paper, more using of electronic devices to view uh, documents and so forth. So it's going to be a whole new way of thinking. There's kind of a lot of staff development that needs to occur. Because quite simply, it's going to be very difficult to have all these devices print on a network. It wasn't meant for printing. It was meant for the electronic. So that's something that we need to develop. That's something that we need to work through. Um, many districts have gone with the idea that it would face a computer, but it the same things. It's not making sense. Uh, state aid for all these big purchases. Uh, how does the state look at those expenditures versus having to be money generated from the district? Very good question. How we usually purchase these devices is using kind of BOCES aided projects. So we go for the BOCES, so we spend what we call an IPA. It's not like a purchase of the So the purchase by five payments, but we get aid back on the price of the purchase next year. So we spend $100 this year, next year we get about $60, $50. So that, that cycle will continue. Uh, and that was the goal of a lot of fellows so until we had financial prices and we had to stop purchasing technology. Any other questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the purpose of the state aid for the state department? Price than what we see on the market? Anything we purchase through proceeds has to go through the state contract process. Usually, the state contract prices are very good, very effective. <laughs> we do purchase devices Thank or equipment you. not through proceeds on, let's say, direct district purchase. That's my starting point. I always you know, give them a hard time trying to get lower prices. <laughs> <laughs> so, much state textbook or more paperless. What area are we text, uh, piloting the uh, electronic textbooks? We have an AP physics class that ironically or coincidentally had their textbook available in an electronic format. So uh, mm -hmm. we were a little yeah. delayed to yeah. that out. But we have a class uh, of approximately 19 to 20 students currently using the point. So those students have an iPad? From the school right now. Okay. The other concept that we need to, or the term we need to be more familiar with, is term DYD. Bring your own device. This is something that we need to look at as well. Um, as you know, we have a very, you know, very robust wireless network at this time. Uh, this pervasive wireless network is throughout the whole building, in every, in every building throughout the whole district. I envision being able to have let students come in with their own personal device and come into the district and be presented with the, let's say, set of apps or set of programs that the district deems appropriate for the educational environment. So, you know, if John gets an iPad for Christmas, and as a parent, I kind of do this as well. And why couldn't we bring that into the school and use it for school purposes? Of course, we have to work out all the administrative policies, procedures. Uh, a lot of us have to work out a lot of details. But I think that's a neat situation where a student can bring their own device, which would have to meet certain requirements, and then be able to use their device, take them home um, as if it's the school you know, uh, supply device. So that BYOD, I think, is something we need to look at, seriously consider. Um, I think it's a good way to uh, bring the B1 open it would be nice if we went to that design too, as if the parents could get access to maybe purchasing the device through the school so that they get the better postage pricing versus, you know, you may find that more people would be apt to buy it if you're going to save 50, 75 bucks by purchasing it through the school. And most I buy it through the school versus going to the Apple store. So I think that most vendors do provide some sort of discount. Apple does, Dell does, whether or not it's the same level of discount that we get as a school purchase, I'm not sure. There are some school districts that probably are ahead of us on this curve. And uh, how much is damage, theft, things like that become an issue 
when you have these defensive devices. You're right. A lot of districts have jumped into this wave right away. And I believe by us needing to hold off on because of financial reasons, the technology mature. There are software products right now that can help manage these devices in a little bit more robust way. Uh, so that we can have you know, 2,000 devices come to the district, managed, and properly um, proportioned to those students. Many districts have gone through the growing pains of broken devices uh, and what happened, uh, hoping that we can do repairs ourselves internally, but I'm hoping the time that I'll be to work it off, hopefully the students are going to be stuck with it. Old training uh, uh, opportunity to teach yes. in high school. That's the computer repair. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you that we had a set of 12 dishes at home. We no longer do, but our iPad, nothing's ever been happened to it. <laughs> so. But that's a very important part, too. Another idea or another thought about BYID is that they'll treat it a little bit. That's their own place. Sort of related to BYID and one one completing something down the pipe, there's this thing called park assessments. What that means is that uh, at some point, we're going to do an online assessment, whether it's a park or some sort of other, other software package for testing. There's going to be some, or some sort of online based testing that we will need to provide. Um, so, with that, we need to have more devices accessible to students. This is where the, perhaps a one to one deployment would also address the need and, and, and serve the need for your students. One thing I did not mention yet is that with this upcoming summer project, we are getting additional PT boards. Uh, I'm sure you have noticed in, in the elementary schools, especially some rooms have them, some rooms do not. Uh, we are purchasing mobile PT boards uh, for the deployment this summer. So it won't look the same as our nicely prepped Excel classrooms that have the um, you know, driveway squares inside the audio enhancement or controls. Unfortunately, we couldn't come up with a prep project to provide additional capital private tech groups. But these mobile devices will be handy that they can be portable. So should there be a need to redeploy, move from weekends or not, I think this is your sure. They're also adjustable like the ones you have seen in the movies, which I believe is a wonderful feature that we have decided to go with. So that kindergarten rooms, you can roll the board, students can come up and interact. High schools, we have we always out there all the time, but at least you have that capability with the students in a wheelchair, and you can always go and that's a great feature. These mobile devices are also adjustable. I would think that uh, we would have to have some community outreach to explain to Older population, of which I probably am, the uh, the need for this. Uh, we never had that. And, you know, what's wrong with books? And you know, they work for all of us. You know, so I think that's going to have to be a community education. Today, we're going to have some sort of community programs about things with the sharing of information with the students. Yeah, we're going to sell it. Questions? Stephen, with the mobile units, do they have an, I apologize, I don't know what it's called, but there was another station that was by the teacher's um, computer that was. Document yeah, will they have one of those then they that go? Not. They will not. They will not. Okay. Um, what the trend is, is to use an iPad as the document camera. Okay. So we will need to purchase the iPad stand that serves as a document camera. Of course, how it all fits, but to figure it out, that's why we got some time. That's why we're doing the taking the next step in the upcoming school year to see how it all fits, to see if it flows nicely to the teacher so that we can be efficient with um, and maintain that current technology. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, now, can you use a laptop associated with? Now, you said with the Promethean, it's normally you're to a desktop. Are the laptops powerful enough for what the Promethean board needs? Our like on the mobile station? Tablet. The laptops we have in our district, any full-blown operating system, Windows, Mac, 
would have that interactability. What we're mentioning here is if it's the iPad serving as a document camera, you wouldn't necessarily have that interactability per se, or it's just to project whatever is on the desk to the bottom surface so that everyone in the classroom can see. And I believe that most 80% of the time, the document board is used just for that, is to be able to project a large image, um, which I think is great. It's a great use of what that is. The interactive function you know, depends on each, each teacher, their comfort level, depending on the students if you want to go in and interact. Um, but uh, there's definitely that need for large projection device in the classroom. So that would each Promethean mobile unit have a laptop then? So it was a self-contained unit, or would they well, have to plug it, it into? plug it into the teacher workstation that's already that, existing. Okay, that went in the classroom. I, I have to ask, on the tour, did you see a Promethean in? in <coughs> we did. We saw several different ones. Did and you see them work? Mm -hmm. We did not, no. Because I, I mean, I, um, I'm wondering how this work. How is it interactive? That's not one there, right? It is. This one of your models that we have. Um, you're going to watch that walk around. I know, but I. Okay, I'll walk around. You know yeah. what? You know what? Are well, you coming teacher. this? Are you coming Saturday, Kathy? I don't know if I can. Okay, all right. Okay. Maybe what we can do um, at the next meeting is maybe we could um, go into one of the classrooms um, here at Westell um, and be able to see it because it's very, it's really cool to see how it works. And it does, I think what Bob was saying, when people actually see it, it makes sense and you can sell it. But I think to just look at it, you know, it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but when you actually see it. So um, at the next meeting, let me do a little investigating and find Maybe out. If we can show it here. Yeah. You know. uh, it's more fun to see teacher using it. And they're just helping, <laughs> just helping <laughs> counting teachers tomorrow. <laughs> Well, is there anything that Holly or Lauren that you guys could say from your experience well, I mean, in the a school? A simple example would be, you know, a math oh. page that you're working on, you know, and the students have become really proficient at this. You know, they'll go over to the document camera, they'll put it on there, it'll come up on the board, they have special pens, so students can come up, they can work out the problem, it actually writes as if you're writing with a marker right there on the board, you can erase things, it, you know, so, it, and you can you can lower it, so they'll lower it down for the younger students, they'll just press the button, it goes back up so the teacher can write on it, and then when they're done, it erases, and you can put a different document up there. You can also, you know, pull things up from the internet, you can watch videos, you can touch it like a touch screen. I mean, you teaching. know I've watched the billing for all these for how many years, and I've, I've never seen one in action, so okay. I would make a point of stopping in and seeing something. Yeah, that's a good point, too. The multimedia facet, or of these Promethean boards is awesome. Promethean boards that we have more um, distributed have speakers on the side so that they watch a video, educational video. The, the uh, multi-high. <laughs> <just, the laughs> our yeah. math program has little video clips to introduce new concepts. So the teachers always show that on the Promethean um, before they start a new topic. So that the students, it's a nice little cartoon that explains it in a way that the kids feel like they understand before they really get into the math. So there's, that comes with our math program. And the multimedia piece, like um, for instance, if you have third graders and you're doing um, a unit in social studies on, or, you know, around the world kind of thing, you know, China, the Great Wall of China, and you can actually have it up there and the kids can, you know, do an aerial view going over it. It's like you're in an airplane going over it. And then you can be down on another um, view of it where you're actually like walking through it. and. And so it's very interactive and it really, I think with what our kids have grown up with, again, different time frame than, you know, than for us, but I think for what our kids have grown up with, it's what they've become accustomed to, right. their learning style. It's it, So it is different than what we're used to, you know, I had a book and, you know, whatever, but I think it's, it's what they've come kind of up through. And so I think it's definitely a different learning style um, than what we're used to, but it's what they have have kind of come accustomed to. And I think they really miss out on the fact that the Bell and Howell, uh, you know, film projectors used to snap their <laughs> 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 I want to start over again in school. <laughs> <laughs>
Really? <laughs> <laughs> Bob one, he had the chalkboard and his little metal pail. And the one thing, <laughs> <laughs> one thing though we can't quantify is the fact that students love one engaged. You know, there's excitement back into these classrooms. Kids are excited to be in the classroom. They want to play with the TV again. They want to see the big screen. Yeah. I think it's very awesome. The sad part is because we don't have everything in the classroom, we have situations where, students, where teachers have to move from one year to the next to do the classroom. Um, first year being an interactive classroom, next year you know, without. So those are very sad situations where you know they really met, really um, interrupts their lesson, their, um, their delivery of instruction. So that, that's been tough. And that's why the purchase of the additional Prometheans was a very high on the preparedness of the subcommittee. How many? How many more do we need if we were to get one for every classroom? The coming in is there are 92 coming in. So we're going to be close. We'll so be about 60 close. short. Oh, yeah. You said there was about 100. I need to jump the gun here, but it should be downsized. I don't want any things lying around. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the the mobile idea is great until we figure out exactly what we're doing. It'll just you know. And it is tough. We tried to, uh, when we did plan for and took this number of years to plan which moves and which buildings get these rewards, um, we tried to make, we, have, we tried that at one time because it takes a lot of time in these rooms to try to move these rooms from one room to another because of the wiring, it's in the walls, it's up the ceiling, power requirements. So it's not a very simple task to move a community board that we have installed. No, the earlier community boards, a lot of those really came in because of grant monies and you know, Title I or whatever. Prometheans are smart. Well, what are you doing? The first round of Prometheans, the, the, the one you see here with the uh, orange filter, uh, we, when we were looking at different vendors, different products, we had a big off, and I, and I contacted all the major vendors saying, we're going to launch a project, do you want to come in and, and sort of demo, install for free new boards? We think about lives. So uh, at the end of the trial period, we ended up purchasing them. So they're not, they're not that altruistic. Mm -hmm. But it gave us a very good um, hands on experience of different vendors, different types. And that's how we sort of came to the choice of one of the Prometheans. I was just doing a little uh, checking. Um, looks like the Promethean company has a nice app that goes with lots of mobile devices. So there's the interaction that Brian was asking between the iPad and the actual Promethean board. It looks like that they've, you know, factored that in. So. Yeah. Yeah. And they have lots of software tools for teachers to use in the classroom instruction. So I thought we made a very good decision. Great. Does anyone else have any questions for Steven? When you need work done, say a board installed say wiring, and I'm assuming electrical's changed, the amount of electricity you need. Is that something that then goes to building the grounds, or do you have to build the grounds? That's why Joe Fall loves me, because I spend the energy that he saves. So that we go back and forth. That's the thing. As we introduce more technology, it does train more power. And the big initiative we passed by here is just to figure out how we can save and conserve energy. That's why we make sure that all the computers are shut off at a certain hour, um, being very cognizant about what we draw. Now you said we have that the pilot going with the 19 to 20 AP physics students. Mm -hmm. um, has there been any damage with any of their machines at all? I've not heard, so no. Okay. Um, would you get to the point where you may require a deposit from parents on the device? Perhaps. Those are things that we need to discuss as a district with current involvement. You know, I, I know. my opinion on that though is how much does the textbook cost? Yeah, uh, to be honest with you, if you could put five textbooks on an iPad, that's about the same. You know, yeah, I mean, retail you're, you're cost. You're trusting these kids the with paper that can't even get wet, and the cost of that is definitely more than in my opinion. I've had a whole book bag full of them. Yeah, but I think when you look at that, you're probably more likely to have the kids not take the books home. Mm -hmm. Where this iPad, you you there's no personal use for your book for your for your school book. There's a personal use for the iPad. 
So you're going to get more use out of it. Kids are going to try to load their own apps on it. They're going to try to do their own things to it. So that's why I'm thinking that you could, there's more chance for abuse on an iPad than there is with a school book. That's yeah. why I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, with the district provided that uh, iPad, there are the management suite has matured where they're from the lockdown. Oh, okay. We install both the necessary for, and hopefully there's enough manageable um, functions where you know, fifth graders in this school gets this set of apps, whereas you know, this school wants something else, but complementary. Um, and that product has become a lot more robust. Well, we do charge a rental fee on musical instruments, so it's very similar. I think the, ch the children pay take better care of those musical instruments knowing oh, absolutely. their parents are renting them from the mm -hmm. school. So um, it's a very good, that's a very good thought. I'm yep. sure there are a lot of examples. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's but a there's a deposit. Fee. There's it's a deposit a fee, yeah. but it is that's true. something. And that I think, over you, you know, I think <laughs> that when we when we get to there, that administrative policies and procedures and all of that kind of thing, that'll you know be in place. And again, we can be the dreamers, and then somebody else can kind of try to. <laughs> have you heard any horror stories from your other school districts that have already gone through the iPad switch? We took a tour recently in another school district that's much larger than ours, and begins with W. <laughs> um, so they had a pilot program in one grade and one school, and it was successful, but the following year, they took it away from these kids, and the kids were like left kind of lost, and what do we do now? But, to make a long story short, they, they had a lot of growing pains in trying to figure that out. So they, you know, I think this spring, they did give it back to their students because it was a lot more large deployment of iPads in that particular district. But I'm not sure if they're able to fully implement a one-to-one -one deployment because of funding. Uh, I'm not sure if it's a kind of a pause right now. Isn't, isn't there a Rochester School District where every student's getting one? Isn't, isn't that happening? I'm not sure about Rochester. Several parochial schools are. <coughs> yeah, Canisius um, High School just rolled that out. Yeah, there are. St. Joe's. St. Yeah. Joe's, yeah. Salamanca City has um, iPads. Mm -hmm. And just a comment about the textbook functionality, being able to have a tablet that has all your books, and that saves one's back. You know, that's a great, great seat right there. And I, and I envision that there be class sets of books. I don't think this is a total abandonment of books. I kind of like books sure. myself. Yeah. But it's uh, you know, being able to have accessible wherever you are and whenever you need it, I think that's a function that we need to really pursue. And well, I agree. I, I think you know, Lisa brought up that the learning environment that we grew up in, you wanted to see something, you opened up the book and you saw a two-dimensional picture. If I want to see the Great Wall of China as a kid, I opened up the encyclopedia and found it. Now these kids can see a 3D dimensional, they can do a flyover, they can do everything else. Where for us, you would have had to go to China to do that same exact thing that they can do now. And the kids, that's what they want. They, they If you try to give them a two-dimensional picture, they look at it going, What's that? How am I supposed to see that? You know, they're, you know, so I, I, I like the idea of more tacking and, and stuff like that because uh, I think that's going to engage the kids more. So there's also, uh, I was going to say, there's also some software that came out a couple years ago called iAuthor, and it's a Mac product, but, um, you know, people who are savvy enough can create their own textbook. You know, so some of our teachers, you may see our teachers take off and creating their own educational resources. You know, not, I'm sure they're doing that now, but to be able to create their own textbook, um, you know, put it on iTunes for free and then have their students download it right on their iPads is quite, you know, quite a remarkable turnaround from, you know, oh, back yeah. in the day, you know. <laughs> so it's amazing what these kind of opportunities will, un how they will unfold for our kids. Switching gears a little bit, um, in terms of, you mentioned servers, you know, switches in the data center, I'm going to have to lump in Promethean boards with this. Um, do you have currently a plan, I'm sure you do, and if you could describe it, what the upgrade or replacement is for each of those? I mean, servers, you know, I know how many servers we have at, at the college, and I know what they're doing, and the server has gotten terrible, but you know, trying to predict when, when a switch is going to go down or how that's going to go, what's the current plan for replacing, especially like with the Promethean boards, we're still trying to catch up to get access for all students, but at that time, the older ones are getting older, and so how, what's, what's kind of the thoughts on that? Those are very good questions, and very, thank you for bringing that up. 
some of the growing pains we have gone through, especially from the Ethan side, is when do we replace the ramps? Even though they may not be broken, they can break down. And those are issues that we're still trying to figure out the best solution for when we're looking at ramps that cost like two, three million dollars. Um, we don't have a solution for that answer for that right now. Uh, server side, you know, we do monitor everything so we know what's going to be fix things or something's going on. Infrastructure, I'd like to serve on the other side. From the infrastructure side, I think we are due to replace some of these fixtures uh, since they're, they've been in existence since 2004. Uh, and again, so. um, from the server side, you should have to know that we are going to work with So we're virtualizing these servers so that um, our draw of power will be less in the data center. So we can move this to be more virtualized in the server side of things, as well as some desktops, which I have very touch base on. So we're trying to virtualize desktops as well. So I'm hoping that next year, as we use these devices, we'll kind of uh, identify bottlenecks or holes in our system that you know, I'm assuming you know they're there and we need to address and, and replace and continue the cycle of uh, keeping up with this problem. Great. Maybe you need to have a conversation with Joe because seeing that the lamp is a bulb, maybe that could go into buildings and grounds. And now it's out of your budget. I'm not got to the same <laughs> <laughs> wow. I think we can try to get it over to get it out of your budget. Oh, it's all coming out of the same pot, don't worry. <laughs> and then we leave this thought too. And as we look at potential views and make sure the kids use this properly, what drives me is that you know, if, if, if you don't teach your kids how to use it here, what else are they going to learn from? So I think that's an important, important press to remember. So that's not us. And, and I just want to throw, I think that's an important point because we struggle with that all the time on my level. They're always saying, because I meet students, when they come from backgrounds where I'm walking through an application, so I'll just hit the red X to close the window, you know, and they're like, well, what's that? You know, they've never used a mouse before. And so I often get into a discussion where individuals often say, well, maybe we should be all paper to help, the, help make sure they can get the process easier. And I counter with, if you go to Walmart or Lowe's and you want to apply for a job, you need to know how to use a computer. So the sooner we start you know, evolving to that, the better off the students will be in the long run. And it's our job to educate them, at least in that part, and then teaching them the respect of these devices and that it's only going to help prepare them for their future. It's one of those underlying non-assessed things that's extremely important in education. So. And that may be something that we look at as a want. You know, maybe we want to see computer teachers not just you know support service, but computer teachers in every building, and computer as a special or something. You know, it's something like that. But so we can't, we can't also always assume that every household has a computer. Exactly. Correct. Because we right. cannot do yes. that. Correct. Exactly. You're very right. That's very true. Okay, Stephen, thank you so much for all that information. That was really helpful. I hope that kind of brought us up um, to par on technology. One of the great things with Stephen being a member of this commission is that as we continue on and more technology questions are raised, we've got the expert right here. So that's perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna continue on with our brainstorming. One more thing, um, there was a copy of the minutes for you. Um, this was from last meeting. Um, we are blessed to have uh, Sarah who is our um, minute person, um, and she is a uh, professional um, transcriber, so we are lucky with that. So, um, so we are gonna have great minutes. They will also be posted um, on the West Seneca Central School's website. Ed is gonna be working on getting our link up there so that our agendas will be posted, our minutes will be posted. Um, all of that will be up there and easy for access not only for us, but for um, the public. So that's um, happening as we speak. Yeah, I, I can tell you the technology side, one thing I'm very proud of my wife for doing, um, she's the secretary of my PTA. Everything we have involved with our PTA is digital on the um, on our website that she, she worked with. So thank you again for helping her on that. So all our minutes, all our notes, all our requests. The one thing I was pushing for was I wanted the teachers to be able to fill out um, in a PDF form or something like a, a re field trip request because we pay for the field trips and you wouldn't believe like just how hard it was trying to figure something some basic thing like that out 
Um, so it, it, it just occurred to me, though, that you spent all the time working with her, and she was just a, a parent. So thank you. Um, but I think it's you know one of the things with this website. It would be cool to have our stuff up there. So if you're talking to anyone about it or at your school and you want to send them there, we'll have all the information. And the continual drive to be more electronic. I mean, Brian Grant talk about the central registration process. I think totally need that this year to be more digital. Yeah. Bring out a great example. So it's it, the technology piece is really vital to making a. Um, multi, as I always say, a school district is not what we think of as a school district. This is a multi-million dollar corporation um, that is just huge. And it, it, yes, it is a school district, and it, it, it takes on a separate, you know, separate look and an entity. But it is a multi-million dollar corporation with lots of, um, you know, pieces in there. So. Um, what we're going to do now is we're going to return to our brainstorming. And for those of you that weren't able to be with us last um, meeting, what we decided to do was we decided to take and break down via what our mission statement is. And we started with academics. We went from academics to athletics. And what we did was we did our needs and our wants. Our needs um, were really what to fulfill our district mission statement. Um, and then our wants were anything here, there, and elsewhere. When we brainstorm, the brainstorming idea is to get as many things down on the paper. We're not gonna stop and chit chat about every item, okay? And if we do, I will cut you off tonight, okay? <laughs> I will cut you off. <laughs> because that is not the idea of what we wanna do. I promise you we will have an opportunity to talk about the items, but for right now, it's really brainstorming. There's no bad idea. I don't want to hear why we can't do it. I just want to hear that it needs to go on the board, okay? Then there'll be a time when we look at it and say it may not be the right thing, but brainstorming sessions, there are no bad ideas. There are no wrong ideas. It's, you know, it, it is to get the ideas on the paper. I don't want to have to cut you off, but I will. <laughs> that is your warning. Okay, so we have our athletics and our academic needs up there. We're going to start tonight with technology. And Danielle was so kind last meeting to be our scribe. She is not here today, but Joanne is. And she has perfect penmanship and is going to be <laughs> my scribe tonight. You do. We'll you see. do. So she's going to come up and be our scribe tonight. And we are going to try to get through. We have about an hour and 10 minutes. So the idea tonight is we're going to try to go through um, our needs and our wants for technology. And then we're going to move along from technology and we're going to keep going down our list. So we've got um, technology, we've got um, transportation, we have um, buildings, facilities, um, so we've got a few big things, and we also have fine arts programs, which are big items that we want to talk about. Um, so we're going to start firing them off. Joanne's going to be our scribe. Um, and remember, no idea is a bad idea, and we're not going to discuss them. No sidebars. Okay. All right. So what do we want to see for technology? What do we want here at West Seneca? Bigger budget. Bigger budget? <laughs> <laughs> I, nope. <laughs> no textbooks, iPads. Oh, or whatever version I, you know. Okay. No ta tablets. tablets. Textbooks. Tablets? Yeah. Yeah, we'll just go with one list. <coughs> tablets? Get the white out. Training for the new world. Yeah. Training. Consistency through the entire district. Con consistency through through the entire district. And also teacher trainings for technology. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So we've got training in a couple of different ways. Training for the community. Um, to be, you know, to be able to sell to the community, and then training for the teachers. Uh, to bring them on board. Parent training. Parent, parent, parent training. training. Yeah. Is the isn't the librarian a technology person now? The the librarian is a um, 
library media specialist. But who, okay, so do we have Question, anyone? shush. Okay, next. <laughs> <laughs> so really, I want someone to teach the kids specifically okay. on these computers. All right, so you want a teacher? Yeah. Like a, a, a computer teacher? Yeah, a specialist. Okay, we'll take that. Somebody is building to fix them if there's something wrong. Tax, okay. You can't shush your coach here. <laughs> more tax. If we have tax already. Uh, probably need uh, more server uh, power okay. or bandwidth. And some of this, you know, we may not know the ins and outs of, so as we're putting it on there, we'll eventually find it all out. Uh, we may need more uh, wireless hotspots, more hot wireless spots. capabilities. <laughs> I would I like the idea of uh, integrating whether it's your own device or a school provided device. So BYOD. however you you know the I like B B Y O D. I like I like the B Y O D if we can save the school some money, that's great. Um, I don't know how to say this, but I want to be able to like say teach more than one classroom at a time. Distance learning? Is that what you're what yeah, you're thinking? Yeah. Okay. Like, you know, 10 kids in one class, 10 kids in a different right. across town, yep. one teacher. Distance learning. I'm assuming we need more printers with us. Okay. 3D printers. 3D printers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll limit. Stephen, we just had it. I know. You gotta change that bigger uh, I'd like to see <laughs> online classes, so in case we don't have enough kids to fill the classroom, that we okay. can have online learning available. Okay, and I think that would come under distance learning too. That's part of that kind of all phases in together. What else are we thinking? I'd like to see uh, dictation software in, uh, nice. across the district for kids that have uh, severe reading disabilities and writing. About Nike fuel bands in phys ed classes. What? Yeah. Nike. Is that the thing? Nike fuel bands. Uh, they wear them on the wrist. They track the movement. They track uh, My wife the steps. Heart rate. In <laughs> <laughs> That's a great idea. How about more adaptive equipment for um, going with the dictation software, but more adaptive equipment for kids with special needs? <laughs> I, I would just hate to see the, that I see where you're going with the dictation software for special needs children, but I would hate to see it go for any regular ed. They already are having issues. I'm side bothering, sorry. <laughs> what else do we see? I, I would say that, uh, I don't know if this fits this um, brainstorming session, but the integration of computer science in our curriculum. So uh, the promotion of the jobs that are going to be available in the future uh, with respect to computer science, coding, uh, things of that nature. Um, I would like to see us be able to come in and bring us um, like up to the number that we need. So like the premium boards, let's get our number where, where we need it. So, you know, equity. Get us all set. You know, I, I don't know if this is under technology or not, but like the TVs are so, like, the, does every classroom have TVs? Like, I know Winchester has a TV show every morning. They put on a new sh newscast yeah, every morning. Yeah, no, I won't answer. <laughs> <laughs> is that the I'm same? just trying to focus this in. Does, does all the schools have that, or is it just Winchester? So we have, uh, and you go to a website, you get the live TV feeds. There are about, can we how many channels? 20. 20 channels that we have a live feed. So we thought that with the Prometheans, that the Promethean would be the new TV now. Mm -hmm. So some of the classrooms where we had a chance to, within the capital project, 
we remove the, the typical CRT TV from those rooms uh, in hopes that they will use it for the community as the TV. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. That answers that question. Sort of so to get my thing up there, I want to see all the schools that have the ability to put, do a TV show. And that may already be there, if I'm wrong, but I think Winchester, they have so much fun with that every morning. Anything else on technology? Students. Yeah. I'm not sure if you could write this down in a short space here. <laughs> what about something in the community where they can provide students with wireless internet access? Mm -hmm. So when they're after school hours, I'm not sure where they congregate. South Gate, I'm not sure where. Well, yeah. Would it be cool if they you know, can use their tablet devices uh, to access the internet and therefore their school systems, wherever they are in the West Side of the do our libraries offer that or no? Yeah. Good one. How about uh, student digital portfolios? Yeah. yeah. Middle school is using those. But even more so, you know, even in UPK, kindergarten, children identifying letters, numbers, children sight words, children reading sentences, children reading paragraphs, books, writing books. The journey of education, digital, for every parent, you know, the parent to have access to their child's visual, digital learning journey. Perfect. So we're going to make sure that the parents have access? So we're going to make sure they have a, a computer too then? That's, is, that your, is that your suggestion for the no, brainstorm? No, I'm just saying, if we want to make sure that, that all children have well, access... Then that's your idea, then right? We may need to make sure the family has access. There you go. Well, that could be something that they have access to the iPad with. But they may not have an iPad. Well, no, but when we give them one. Well, then they have to have, <laughs> the, they have, to have the financial means to be able to get internet service but in their home. But that's what they're talking about. I mean, our, I mean, our, our school based, provided one. That's what the community-based wireless access could possibly be. But the overarching right. concept of addressing the hazards is having not to come to the right. people that are mm -hmm. right. Yeah. How does that work? Isn't iPads like can't you just turn one on and do internet stuff with it, or no. you gotta be someone? You have to have yeah. wireless access to these. Okay. Like the library, the town library, they have it, and they're sure they have wireless access that's open to I know yeah. I know mine doesn't have a lot. I think one of the things that we want to continue is with our website. I think our website here in West Seneca is really very um, very good. It's very thorough and I think we want to continue to grow that. Um, and so I think our, just our, our district website as a whole, uh, you look at other district <coughs> websites and it's I have a question. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> Thank go ahead. you, moderator. Um, I, I notice our website is mobile friendly. It comes up with a mobile version. Um, how old is our WCMS web content management system? Sorry. I know they're new festival, but let me get back to you on that. Okay. I know that that's kind of you, by looking at it, when you go just through the computer, you can tell it's. Good yeah, it's, you can tell it's a little dated in the structure, the font size, and all of that. We've just been looking for a new WCMS. We purchased one, so I, and I know what the capabilities are with that, so, so I was just curious. Um, but to go along with that, brainstorming, switching gears, <laughs> um, the an administrative structure to ensure that, and you mentioned the committee before, but an administrative structure that can evolve to be able to handle these types of issues and so it doesn't have to fall onto one person. Yeah, yeah. I think we need to take we. I would think if we're doing all of this, we're going to need a bigger team of um, people. You know, I'd like to see it as like a like a high school internship program where you have students <coughs> that express an interest in this field, and now they're able to learn underneath Stephen or his team, and it get that kind of the computers the computer science program that Brian's talking about. But I, I'm almost thinking like. An intern, like an internship at the school, where the students are the ones that are fixing and they're learning all of that stuff. So it's not necessarily an outside company; it's the students doing fixing the iPads and fixing laptops, and so people can see what goes into it. So, okay. Okay. Like internships. Well, then let's go back to the other one. Let's put their kids learning how to mow the lawn. <laughs> free labor, right? Um, one thing I want up there, um, which I think would be great, is. 
uh, social, more involvement with social media instead of hiding from it. I think we work with the kids. Jumping on top of it. Yeah. yeah. Well, parents, computer counselors to advise the district. I mean, we have a lot of talented uh, thirty somethings and twenty somethings and ten somethings. But anyway, that can help make sure that the district is going in the right direction. And that's the, the young adults that have the young children that want to make sure that we do. Okay. Yeah. Anything else? This is a great list. We did a great job. You scared the crap out of us. If it's not, if it's not I, I would like to see uh, maybe just, how, you know, Holly and I can teach her kids house more interactive learning in the classroom. I'm not okay. sure how much is sure. textbook versus technology, but if we're going to go to technology route, I want more interactive learning then to utilize the technology. And some of that will come hopefully with training and lots of things. But I think that's a great, um, great thing to have up there to remind us of, of what we're doing. You might even want to use like student mentoring. You know, you've just said we've got these like, extremely intelligent children who are actually know more about it than we do in many cases. Maybe they could be mentors to incoming classes and whatnot. Yeah. Great. Okay. The younger kids to try to create more learning that uses the frozen thing yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the melody. <laughs> it's good. Okay. All right. That is a great list to get us going on technology. So we're going to set that aside and we're going to move on to our next. We are moving, folks. We are on the. As, you're, on as you're writing it out, why? Just I'm just throwing this out there. If that's a great thing, how come we're not writing on that? <laughs> we will be. I'm just asking. Next meeting. Like, is that? No, you, is that what you would do nowadays? Yeah. With the kids, is sure. right on that instead of that. Yes, you would. Okay. Yeah. And then does it digitally like take a picture of it or something? As far as I know, yes. Cool. As far as I know, yes. Yeah. It's really just our wants. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we've got our wants for athletics, academics. Technology. Okay, we're going to move over to the fine arts program. I thought we were holding on that because uh, Dan, that was, and yeah, Dan yeah. Gal and yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Can you make that into transportation? Sorry. Sure. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Okay, transportation. Uh, transportation for all the programs to wherever they're going so whether it be athletics whether it be a field trip and if it's a school related event I think the school should provide the busing for it okay. I would like us to look at the difference of having our own buses versus all sourcing out like what would be the advantages and disadvantages so, so in other words, buy more buses. Possibly. Well, to, to piggyback on it, yes, because I think we should limit how much time the kids spend on the bus. I, I, if it was in, in my ideal world, I would think that if we could try to find a way to keep kids at no more than a half an hour on the bus on their way home, that would be great. I know I'm in three blanks. So. <laughs>
party. You don't know. Um, but other issues aside from like you know noticing any sort of malaise, counseling, you know those types of things, bullying, you know sure. non non types of things and proper intervention strategy. I know there probably is one, yeah. but just so That's that okay. even so communicating that out or something like that to be able yeah. to give a good communication plan out to parents. Make up whatever you want. <laughs> Perfect. Um, it, it, you know, the uniform distance to walk to get a bus, I don't know if that's out in my field. Or, or, um, I see some kids, the bus drop stops right. at every second house, and other ones are sustaining in a corner. I don't know if that's an age function. But I can tell you a couple things. One, our kindergartners are dropped off at the door. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And two, if it's a busy street like Harlem Road, Union Road, they will get dropped off at their driveways because there's a danger because okay. the street is so okay. busy. So those kids will get dropped off right near their house versus you know, a side street that I'm on where all my kids have to walk up to the central corner where all the streets not there. A more understood policy. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, to it, from the bus driver route is that the bus drivers kind of stick to it because I know on my street alone I got this bus stop is at my house they'll stop at a kid two doors down they'll stop at a kid the next door down they're all supposed to get off the same one so the bus drivers arbitrarily making their own stops so I think that the drivers stick to the route that they got so all these extra stops add time is so. that first student in your neighborhood what is that is that first student yes as a mom I have no problem with the bus stop at <laughs> just gotta tell you, it's nice well, to get my kid get off right here so I can see him because I live on a corner. So it's nice for him to come up. Just see. Well, a uniform house. Mm -hmm. I would it also is, like it that. It is cost effective if we can pick them up at one more. Not not necessarily all in one corner. Right. Because some of these streets are very, very long. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have you know, every I, 10 I, houses, whatever. I, I think that we get it. I'd like to see the bus take a more proactive role of setting the bus stops for the kindergarten kids so that the parents don't have to call because technically that's the kid that should set the bus route is where the kindergarten kid is that's in my opinion that's where the book that's where the pickup should be i think they do that yes. i really and just from my street i see like the house is usually the bus stops for kindergarten maybe too um with technology so using like more technology in helping to plan <laughs> the bus routes and you know plan the stops and as we, as we venture more into power school and stuff like that we can target more of that so it, it's not you know just people oh I, I would like GPS units for any bus that's going to any of the school events because sometimes they'll print off a route and if the road is closed that's they could be true. clueless how they're getting to the next school so I think there should be some sort of GPS system that the bus driver has that they have to reroute they're not fumbling around on a phone or something, it's already there. Okay. Eric. So. Tackling the issue of parents picking up their so many kids after school and making, okay. and trying to guide them to using the buses. Okay. So, I know some of our elementary schools yeah. that we've been talking about that. Um, one of the things I would like, and I don't know how it would work, but we all know that there's times when buses are late, whether, and sometimes it can be a half an hour, it can be, 40 minutes, it might be in the winter or something. If there's not a way we can contact home, so you're not like, oh my God, did somebody have an accident? Did, was there somebody, you know, what happened? Like, there's got to be a way that we can notify. We actually do it. There oh, is, yeah. It's just not, it's not, you know, it's not being used maybe as much as you'd like, but I know, like, one of my buses were in an accident earlier this year, it was a minor one, but um, it went through the global connect. So every parent was notified from that bus because it was, it was late. Right. But I know they probably don't. Too and maybe, forever. and maybe, and I'm not saying if it's 10 minutes. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, everybody needs to, but you know, in the beginning, and, and again, you need to be patient. I know that. But when you have little ones on the bus, you know, I mean, if my kid's late now, I mean, that's one thing. But when you have little ones, you, you get nervous. Our bus is, our, we have different bus drivers every day. It's finally calmed down, but our bus drivers, they would forget about my kids. My kids were for weeks coming home 20 minutes or a half hour late, and I never got a phone call, so actually that was what I was just going to suggest, was 
you know, getting some sort of system to notify what, about, what about the opposite? What about a way to notify easier, like that there's an issue? Not danger issues, I'm saying, you know, reverse GPS. You throw in your tab. Oh, I see what you're saying. Kids were 20 okay. minutes late to get today. Is. Yeah. Your, your school issued your iPad, bus, you pull it out and just send it out. at this time. As soon as that bus leaves, there's a notification yeah, that goes out. Technology. Yeah, technology. Yeah. I want to see like technology on the buses if we're going to own them. Like videos. Like, could, 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 you, could you imagine if the kids would be way better if we could play like semi educational videos? <laughs> you need frozen on the bus. Frozen. <laughs> <laughs> are you inviting Kevin to a meeting because he has as he has, we as we get going and break off into subcommittees, we will. Yeah. Okay, because he has that technology, he can show you how he yep. works out. He's got a whole presentation that he's emailed me over, but when we're ready, okay. we're gonna have him come because I don't want to answer any transportation questions <laughs> and answer them incorrectly. <laughs> so we will have him. Yes, he will be coming. Uh, I'll go with the internship program again on transportation so that people interested in car repair have a source to learn. Or drive a bus. Drive a bus? Yeah. Bus day. <laughs> um, again, something that involves younger students going on the bus. Like we sometimes do our kindergarten orientation, the kids go on a bus ride. Um, I know that's not happening this year for our school. Um, but I would like to make sure that that is something, even with the parents involved, because parents sometimes forget what it's like to ride a bus. I know Saturday, some of us were pretty <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> that was uh, quite the experience on the bus. How about shocks for the bus? <laughs> I think shocks on the bus would be a phenomenal idea. <laughs> if we're not going to put shocks, put some sort of bringy seat so that as it goes up and down our kids are so actually that we probably need a chiropractic program to go after the transportation issue we have all right so we've got transportation anything else on transportation that's a nice list again good list to look alternative at. fuels alternative fuels that's a great one like if we have pedals on every seat <laughs> Since we're going to make them fix their own computers, we might as well make them drive themselves home. <laughs> All right. Yeah, we're great. Okay. Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Moving on. That's great. It is really cold in here. Meet the camera, Frank. It's really hot. Oh, meet the camera. One to the other. All right. Next, we're going to go. We've got current use of facilities. So we'll do current use of facilities. And then we also have configuration of buildings. So do we want to do the two of those I think are going to go separate or together? Can you clarify configuration of buildings? Redistricting. My thought would be different uses for the buildings possibly. Like, we're like for instance, if program. you made this building a high school. So I think you keep them separate. Keep them separate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so too. Just making sure. Okay, current use of facilities. I would like to see um, a bigger pre-K building, pre-K um, and maybe in one building. And then I'd like to see um, a daycare. Is that current use or is that future use? Well, facilities, well, current use, use of the facilities. That's what you want to see for the current use. Without changing, I mean, with, with what we have, oh, okay. the facilities that what we have, or do we want to put that under reconfiguration? Let's clarify. Or Basically, what you're saying is the same as what you have now. Okay, That's all right, cross those off. All right, so what we have now, we'll put that under reconfiguration. So current use of facilities, what do we want? Sure that's what I'm that's why I'm asking would that be like making sure that all the libraries and, and the elementary schools that they all have the same you know I mean I don't know or the same cafeteria the same tables like we had talked about on Saturday how they all had different tables is that kind of what this is like current use facilities that kind of thing or 
I would feel like I would say the current use would say have all libraries in the district, elementary libraries that all have the same content, the same computer access, everything. To be, instead, maybe it just needs to be, instead of current use of facilities, should it just be facilities? Like what we would like to see in facilities available instead of current use? Maybe that's what's holding us up, the current use? Yeah, or just eliminate, I think you already know the current. Eliminate current. current. Yeah, just, just eliminate not. current. Yeah, you already know what the current use right. is. You wanna, so you wanna what we want facility-wise, what we'd like to see. So then you have your two things brought to put back on. Okay. <laughs> so I'd like to see um, a bigger pre-K program, bigger pre-K building, and I'd like to see a daycare. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just the difference in, you know, each elementary school is different. But yet, in the same breath, you just said you don't want them all to be circles. No, but we can put it up there, oh, okay. and then we'll go back, because we're not, we're not going to crush anything off. Okay. We'll do that later, but right now, we'll just get all the different... Handicap, handicap access and all that. Handicap access. I've been at some meetings where we've talked about the need to get discussion of locations in middle school to get okay. them starting to think about like locations. What about re redistribution of students? You know, the building's more evenly spread out. Filled by teachers that were left. But then you yeah. also then overflow out right by the tennis court. Definitely so something to talk about there. when we get on to parking. Okay, uh, what else? Less land. Less, less land? Facilities, yeah. Tell me more. Uh, Clinton Street or one of those schools has that, yeah. that parcel at the end we don't need. Less land, less land. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. What you can do the vocational internships on this one too, because there's plenty of kids that could learn handy stuff around here, and then I can put them work at their house. Brian, can we add a facility? Absolutely. How about an athletic field house? Yeah. Um, and the um, elementary buildings. Oh, that's so great. Okay. What about? I can dream. Central, like, fancy. How about centralized food service? I was just thinking that about air conditioning. Yeah. School year round. What do you mean by centralized food service? You know, um, instead of each kitchen producing more centralized. Um, distribution, like you have one center or one of the larger kitchens making for the smaller elementary schools. All right, let's see. We've got air conditioning. What else? How about uh, consistent grade grouping? Okay, consistent grade grouping, like east and west, are not consistent at the moment. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. 
took me a second. Okay. I'm following you now. I'm following you now, Bob. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yes, question. Along with Brian's presentation a couple of meetings ago, is there a space planning group that works with you and your projections to make sure that, you know, classroom, because we saw a lot, a lot of variations of classrooms, especially when you look at Potter Road versus Clinton being mirror buildings, you know, and then is there a space facility planning, or does that happen on the district-wide, or is that building-wide, or how does that work? Question. It's a good question, but I just I just need a little more information. Are you asking, so, is there a special committee to look at? Is there a special committee that takes the data you presented on and then takes a look at the projections in the future of the buildings and how the configuration is going to occur? I think this this might be this that, that group. Okay. Well, yeah. I wasn't sure if there was yeah. something currently, because if right. there's not, then put it on the board. Yeah. And I think <laughs> we were looking at like the fact that um, we loved your double classrooms, the classrooms that you were able to open up, and I think... Clinton, you would have loved to have been able to see that. I just want to close their class. We're equal now, right? <laughs> <laughs> and we're too, that's where my son is. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, you know, at lockers, we talked about the lockers. Uh -huh. and we said, we're seeing that house, but she's going to board together. They're life breeders, as we were calling them. <laughs> All right. Lockers, we talked about. Um, what about, and again, it may be more of a building issue, but we've talked about the cafeterias and just the furniture. Um, I mean, I know it's a facility thing, but even, like, we looked at some of the desks and we were like, oh, my God, these are ancient. And we looked at, you know, um, <coughs> we did a building project. Could, would furniture be something that could be in a building project? Oh, furniture? Could, could be. Yeah, just I mean, some things looked worn. What they about it was tired? What about spring cleaning type? Um, at least in, in the schools that I've been in, like there does seem to be stuff that necessarily doesn't be used and isn't used anymore. So just put spring cleaning up there, and we'll talk about it. Later. Yeah. Would we ever be looking at lunch menus? Order for right from their iPad in the morning when you get there. Yeah, it's <laughs> true. Right their tally is a little bit different. Their little tally sticks a little different look. Um, okay, pool upgrades. Pool upgrades. What was it? Pool New. upgrades. New pool. Did you do it soon? Yeah, you might not be able to benefit from that. You could be a coach. How about um, exploring the possibility of? having the schools be more accessible for community events mm -hmm. and, um, and then renting it out and collecting the money in it. What about, um, what about a community ed center? You know, we, we have a community ed office, but an actual space that is theirs, like classroom space and instead of being everywhere and anywhere. Like daytime community ed? Yeah, daytime and evening. Just that it's a, it's a, um, a space that's given to them. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. not used for anything else. It's their their space. Well, like community ed does the Zumba, but only at night or weekends. There's people during the day that want to do Zumba. Just kind of a senior flair <coughs> into their use. And I think with that, when we look at that too, that's a, a great way of selling our whatever we're going to do. Or what, you know, yeah, selling. Where they feel that they're yeah, well connected and can use yeah. the buildings, they are more likely to support yeah. what we're trying to do. Yeah. Thank you. About just being open more than four Fridays a year for school events at night. We can ask you as well. Not the community, just actually school, school and community school functions. We can't discuss it, but I thought you could put in like a request. Okay. No? Oh. We can we can definitely talk about that after that. But it's a great topic. Um, anything else for facilities? Think about I, I what know we, right now we tend to put our buildings out there for rent, and it's a money driver. But I think that if there's a nonprofit that wants to use a building, I think we should have more access to nonprofits on a free basis. 
I think one of the things, and I know Joe's not here today, but I think one of the things when Joe was giving his report was our roofs seemed like it was an over, like it seemed like almost every roof needed attention and a lot of attention. I'd like to see, because I saw a few of them, I'd like to see skylights in every second floor of the building. And ceiling fans too. Oh, I'm the ceiling to... fans in Northwood, yes. The ceiling fans. Oh, are upstairs, yeah. As far as bringing that down. I don't know what category this goes on, but um, like look into the solar power. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or wind. Or wind. Because wind, Winchester has solar power panels. I guess they're not <laughs> up to date though. They're pretty updated. What about landscaping? Just, I think, I mean, we're dreaming. I know it's not the priority necessarily top, but just, you know, when you come into a building, if, if it's really nicely landscaped, it just, it, cur yeah, curb appeal. You know, it's warm and it's, you want to be here. Well, then I guess we need to start hiring some staff. That's what you're going to have to put on there. You, for, I, I, I'm, I'm biting my tongue here because almost all these things you're talking about need staff, and we have lost staff, 35 right. people. Right, curb so. appeal, the daffodils that you see out there, fourth graders here planted. No, I, I get it, and I will put it on there. We're not trying to critique the hiring and process, so we'll put the staff up there, because that's your right. And we, we take, we've taken a huge hit. Well, the students and things that beautify the school. Great idea. Yep. They have a garden club at um, yeah, we have a We have a beautification committee at Winchester with the yes. flowers. And they raise money and buy their own plants. I, I would like to see, um, there's different clubs at the different schools. I would like to see there's some way, and I know that there's a lot of teachers that do that, do the extra clubs, but maybe there's a way that some of the clubs are in all the schools. You know, like Consistent. one, one I, I know like one school has a Lego club, but that's one elementary school that has it. And I'm pretty sure every single elementary <coughs> school kid plays with Legos. So is, is it feasible to have a uniform clubs in all the, in all okay. the schools? Okay. All righty. Got a lot of lists on there. Mm -hmm. That's a big list. We are getting good. We are getting good. We're getting good. Yeah. Anything else on facilities? Facilities is so broad, which is good. Okay. All right. Let's. And these lists are not closed. When you go home tonight and you think and you're laying in bed and you come oh, up with that um, great idea, we can always add. And Brian's got. Recycling each of the schools. Yes. Because we came up with that in our report. Yes. Recycling yep. each of the schools. Yeah, that was huge. Add, add on their dumpsters. Oh. And that might be going to ground. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Anything else? That was fabulous. My scribe is amazing. Okay. So we've got technology is done, athletic programs is done, facilities are done. Now, configuration of buildings. Oh, yeah. So configuration of buildings. Let's talk a little bit before we start to brainstorm of what we think that means. So we like, kind of... It could be like a K through 3 building. Right. And then like 4, 5, and 6. So just like, just thinking outside of the box of how we necessarily have things laid out right now. So, again, it's just brainstorming. It doesn't mean that that's a... Uh, a definite, but it's just some ideas to throw out there. Bob? Can you just ask some questions? Yeah. When this conversation is talked about, it always seems, well, it seems to gravitate to, well, this grade shouldn't be in the same building with this grade. Okay. You know, and those kids are too old, and the rest of these kids are too young, bad influence or whatever. I mean, is, is can anyone explain examples of that that have any validity? No, because those sixth graders took care of my kids when they first started Winchester constantly. Helped them, helped them on the bus, 
So I don't see, I don't believe that for a minute. Oh, I think it, it, it's, well, up to what grade should elementary school, what grade should be middle school? I don't think we'll ever change from high school. Well, I think that there's a lot of different models, and I think that that's what we can look at. Once we list the different type of a model, I think we can go back. Like, if you look at some Catholic schools, they're modeled K to 8. We don't have that model here. It's not to say that it's good or bad. We don't have that model here. Um, we used to have high school used to be not... Um, 10 to 12. Right. This building used to yeah. go to 9. So this building was 7, 8, 9. Right. Late 70s, early 80s. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, um, some buildings or districts have like a K-2 program. Then they have um, like a 3-5 program. Then they, you know, so there's a lot of different things. And I think once we come up with the configurations, then when the group that's meeting on that can kind of delve in and say, well, the research on a K-2 building says this, or the research on a K-8 building says this, and we can kind of look at what it says. I think we really kind of need to delve into it and see and ask our experts. We can certainly at that point bring in, you know, Ryan as an expert, um, <coughs> Uh, and as an expert, I mean, there's a lot of, of people, you know, are building principles um, at some point and really like to hear what they have to say. And, um, you know, they've got, they've got a ton of experience. And, um, and they're ready and willing. They will be here. Believe me. They, they, every time they see me, when do you need us? So they're ready. They want, they want to share. So I think maybe tonight, rather than, and I'm not trying to, skip your question, but I'm thinking that maybe what we need to do is get our thought of our configurations and then as the commit, the small group that's going to look at that, then that's when they'll start to break into looking at the pros and cons. Maybe the buildings, not. The buildings themselves could be used in any Correct. configuration. It's right. The furniture. It's not just the furniture. Remember, the toilets are, well, like things like toilets and sinks, things. those yeah. are all different sizes. I've never too. thought of that. Yeah. You know, are really close to the ground. Yeah. Think about this building. This building has no bathroom right in the flat. You know, so you're sending that little kindergartner down the hall. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> um, so, okay. So, configuration of buildings. What are we thinking? I would, I would like to see a central um, athletic complex. So you have one football field. Maybe that football field can have turf because you're doing one instead of two. You know, if you've got east and west and you're forced to upkeep two different ones, maybe we come up with a centralized athletic complex for both sides. That has the new field house. That has the new field house. One high school. <laughs> Um, primary building like a K1, K2, like heavy literacy, like just like jammed with literacy. A literacy building, I'm going to call it. I think that goes back, Bob had mentioned that too, um, Lauren, I think that's really important that we even out right now and just to bring everybody up to speed in case you don't remember, East Middle School is 5, 6, 7, 8, West Middle School is 6, 7, 8. So we still have fifth grade in our um, elementary buildings, just to clarify. I think we need uh, input from the school personnel to guide us on this more than any other way. They, they live it every day. Right. We think we know what's right. Yeah. We've got experts and we got a lot of them that we can draw on. I personally would prefer pre-K was not a separate entity and if it was going to be the primary building because, you know, part of 
making them our community. And that's one of the things I think is missing now because I have so many of them is that they're with us for a year, they become part of Potter Road, and right. their parents get very involved, and then they go to all their different schools the next year, and they have to reacclimate to a new building when they're only four years old. So I think oh, so we look at the in every building. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I think that's a great idea. It's only building four to be if you have primary buildings to be in the primary building. I'd like to, when we talk about configuration of buildings, one of the things that I would like to look at is transitions. Like, what is the right number of transitions, if there is? You know, like, if you if you set out a kid that trans is a, tra is a transition from pre-K to a new building, is it too much to have them trans um, go again in second grade to another? Like, what is the, the transition look like? We may be surprised. Right? I, I would think that you'd want it instead of like a K to two, you'd want it like a pre K through two or pre K through three. You know, I, I, Uh, configuration of buildings again if you had classrooms where you know say even one high school but two campuses where certain classes were at one others were at other a teacher could teach to a class in two different campuses in the same high school so reconfigure classrooms to be able to do more distance learning distance learning thank you well it, it, look, thinking about the academies and things like that but um, maybe one of the high schools that could be more focused on vocations, technology, engineering, and the other ones could be more like the fine arts or you know, things like that. Yeah. <coughs> more of a more focused um, settings to them. And then too, you know, it's possible that maybe um, because of the populations that we have, you know, maybe it's possible that that middle school section that they're looking at there at four to eight could be maybe a four to seven. So then uh, eight through twelve would be the high schools, and your your modified sports already start in some of those eighth grades. So maybe you know you end up putting the eighth grades. It just kind of flows a little bit better for them. Modified, modified sports would be seven and eight, right? No? Yeah, I think you're yeah. Seven and eight? Oh, they are seven and eight. Uh, what else? What about the possibility of, um, when we think of the configuration of buildings, just like the movement of, I guess, looking at each individual building and maybe especially like you know is there a bigger building where, where we're clogged up with kids right now could those could we go to a bigger building is there a ability to go to a build a bigger building could we use this building in a, for instance in a different a different light well um, I think that one of the things that has to be looked at is um, when when I was a student at East senior high school, you know, there were times where classmates of mine would be with me in, say, ninth grade, but then they, I wouldn't see them again until 12th grade because they, they constantly changed the, the boundaries to balance off the student population to fit the building. You know, where we have a situation where the Winchester Potters, they have smaller numbers. And, you know, Clinton is busting at the seams as is you know, West Elementary area. So, Would that be more like a f more fluent redistricting? Yeah, something that is just an ongoing thing. It's not something that, you know, nice. right now it seems as though um, the district has been stagnant on wanting to, to use that term redistricting. But if 
if we have something that's different, something that's more of a, you know, balancing the student constant flow, of balancing the student population. You know, I, I know that that would kind of hurt some of the kids that if they they have ownership in one school and then they move to another one. But you know, I don't I don't know how we can really solve that problem of. Uh, but there's still more some of them. Yeah. That's a, it's a, it's an it's ongoing, a tough one. it is, but it's definitely something to look at. And I think what we have to remember is nothing's off the table. We have to be willing to look at some things that might be uncomfortable. That's such a, it's a, it's an it's ongoing, it is, but it's definitely something to look at. And I think what we have to remember is nothing's off the table. We have to be willing to look at some things that might be uncomfortable. Well, we had it in the 70s. We had, you know, split sessions. That's yes, I, yeah. You know, I mean, I remember I was on the early session, and then I was home by noon, you know. Well, and you I survived. Know, I survived. <laughs> I walked my little sister to kindergarten. <laughs> when I was in Lakeville, one of the things that they did was um, when Billy moved to Lakeville, they got rid of the capacity. Mm -hmm. Their space was not the same. But our capacity isn't there. When I was at West Senior, there was 2,500 kids there. And I think so it's kind of like West Senior. They, they get like half now. They're huge. They bound, their boundary is right up against mine. Right. So instead of filling and filling and filling, something that's already first went and seemed to do that and say, you know, enrollment is closed for this year and they could come over dollars, huh? That's an interesting concept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But transitions is so a big thing. So you want to be careful, I think, not to. Um, 
locally, but within the state, what other um, what other school districts to look at? What other school districts have a two two building high school system right now? Like how is that working, and how do we not emulate them? I'm not saying that we are West Seneca, but but how is it working? Like what could we gain from looking at their model? So what other models? Do you know what I mean? Like what, what are our peer districts? How do they handle the issues, and how does that link to current educational theory, and in terms of best practices based on size? So, and I don't, and again, that's I know that falls into Brian's bandwidth, but you know, if and I'm not trying to say we, I mean, you know, we throw an internship and everything. I'm not going to say throw a committee and everything, um, but um, you know, just a resource so that maybe it's a symposium every three years where you know we develop here partnerships with, I use the example Webster. You know, Webster is a large suburban area of Rochester, um, and they have two high schools. They actually built a second high school in the early 2000s. So now, how do they deal with, you know, how do they deal with the transition? What's their model now? I mean, you know, we bring up Williamsville. Williamsville has three totally separate types of instructional models. Williamsville East is nothing like any other school that, you know, and I mean, they got no walls in their class. I want to yeah, no, There's no wall. There's still no so wall. So, you know, you want to avoid that. I mean, but creating that peer model um, by finding out what others are doing, and then even look nationally, looking at research on, on a cyclical basis so that it doesn't become a big shock. The research. Yeah, I think, I think we need to, I think we need to look at that. And as we're, we're talking about that, um, when, we, when we finish up, Eric, I'm going to ask you to, to talk a little bit about that for a minute. Anything else on configuration of buildings? Well, you know, I heard it spoke of, and there were so few rain in the east and west, west and east. We have to go to north and south. And then we can figure in a more logical way, maybe if that, I mean, I don't know. Um, start to try to get everyone away from I'm east and west and into more I'm west center. Right. So eliminate that east west and become that one district, one no uh, no line down moving roads. Okay. That's not the way it is in Well but you yeah. know what I mean. Yes. You know what I mean. You know how big this one does I go to a lot of schools um, for my work. And they're really trying to get new schools where they do improvements to the offices right in the front when you walk in for safety reasons. And I noticed one of our schools, the offices, you have to walk through the school to get to the office. And this is where the same time we're living now and the world the way it is. I, I would like to see when we, if there's ever remodels for the offices to be Well, I think the, the configuration of buildings, too, is to think about security. Um, whether it's um, where the office location is, but just security in general. Um, redrawing districting lines between the schools. Okay. Yeah. And having an updated map. <laughs> We're working on that. So when you're thinking redrawing the district lines, Corey, are you thinking like um, like the line between like Orchard Park and West Seneca? Is that the line you're talking, or are you talking within within, like, West, Seneca. within West Seneca? Okay. So you're basically talking elementary schools. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to be the biggest thing. Yes. So. Anything else anybody can think of for that one? Okay. Wow, we did great tonight. We were on task. Nice job. Okay. But so, still don't get brownies. Oh, I did get time to Saturday. I'll have treats. Um, okay, so as we come to a close on this, the only other one that we need to do then is our fine arts program. So we'll get that done for our June meeting. And then what I'd like you to start to think about is of the different topics that we've talked about, we're going to use those as small breakouts. So of those, Start to think about where you think your interest might lie. And for some of you, you're going to say, oh, I don't know. I, I have more than one. 
And I don't want you stuck on something without the ability to go to another one. You may, you may be able to, do, you know, work on more than one. That's, I'm not saying you can only do one because um, that's not fair either. But I also don't want people to get stuck on something for the next year that they're not really passionate about or doesn't, you know, they, they don't think is maybe for them um, something that they really would want to work on. So start to think about it. We're still always going to be coming back into the whole group and sharing and talking and you know, just because you're going to be off working as a small group on configuration buildings doesn't mean that the whole group isn't going to be talking about that again. Okay? Fine arts is the last one we have. Fine arts is the last one we have. Goal tonight. Could we wrap that up in 10, 12 minutes? Um, I thought we told some of them. We, we told, yeah. there, there's a lot of people that fine arts was one of their top priorities, but they're at concerts tonight. Okay. Right. So yeah, we so kind of good. asked, they asked if we could hold on that. Um, but what I would like is, I would like to give Eric um, a minute to kind of talk a little bit about once we get into our small groups, how we're going to um, formulate our recommendations and how we're going to begin to facilitate that. So Eric, if you could just take um, five, ten minutes and talk a little bit about that, that would be awesome. One thing that I brought up after we did the elementary school tours, we were sitting here having a great lunch with this, you know, that's during the building dialogue is I brought up the point that after these brainstorming sessions, we need the most important aspect is to make sure our recommendations are all uniform. And not only they're uniform, but they're, they're very transparent with both positives and negatives. Because as these get presented to the board, and as these are public meetings, um, and as we move forward, we want to make sure that everybody knows that these recommendations are being taken very seriously and we do know that there are drawbacks to things. I mean, there's huge drawbacks to, you know, redistricting, which no decision has been made on redistricting, okay? That is just an example that we're using out there that's nothing written in stone. As you could like, say, see. Um, but um, but I, there's a concept that, you know, Brian, you know, is well aware of, and some other is called the white paper. And, and again, I explained this a little bit to the group on Saturday. And the white paper essentially is everything you need to know about a topic. Okay, um, and I'm, I'm my main suggestion is that we develop a rubric of what a, what the end result white paper will look at. It'll be a document that's going to end up being you know seven, ten, fifteen pages long with appendices with with research in it um, where it lays out the suggestion. It then goes into, these are why we feel the justification for why this recommendation is being done, the positives, the negatives, what are we losing by adopting this, what are we gaining by adopting this, the rationale and why the positives outweigh the negatives, and how it's going to help long term in the district. And then all of that gets linked to theory and research. Okay? And that document you know, is something that's going to provide the board with rash, a rational, they can read this document and say, okay, I don't have any more questions on it. We can make a decision based on this document alone. And that needs to be the ultimate goal of what we're doing here. And that needs to be to make sure it's uniform across all these different areas. Um, so that was one of the topics we brought up. Um, you know, as I said, uh, Brian is also working on you know his academic pursuits, as is, a lot of us are familiar with it. So, trying to develop that rubric early, because as we delve into these specific topics, we need to know what the end result is. We need to know how to start where, you know, where do we look for information? You know, example, you know, we look at a literacy or a pre-K through two building, you know, Lisa brought up a great point. What's the research say? Is that better than having a, you know, a K through five building, a K through six building? We all have our own experiences that we go through. We all lived through the lives of our children and you know saw the experience that they went through but what is what is what is the right decision and what can we use to make sure that we're supporting it the right way with information not just only our gut feeling so the term is a white paper and that's what i'm proposing we set up once we break up into our groups 
then I think the whole, we all need to decide as a large group, what are the most important pieces that we need to ensure on? You know, how do we want to find a peer institution who's doing this in practice for every single, you know, who's going through this now? Just an example. So that's what that's kind of what we discussed on Saturday, and I feel it's extremely important as we move on, especially because once we dive in, I have a feeling, based on my experience working in groups after these brainstorm sessions, everybody runs off and is very excited to do things, but then all the recommendations come back and they're very different, you know, and then we won't be able, we need it all to be uniform so that, because realistically we come back with five different recommendations, board may adopt one or two. That's feasible right now, but they'll need to be able to have the rest of them to make a decision which is the one we need to prioritize. So, I think, I don't know if I'm going to add to this or I'm going to use clarification to make it more clear. If we're yeah, we asking the board, say, we, we recommend you do this, here's why you should, but also, here's the reasons why you may not. Mm -hmm. And then, then they said, look like, again, to the public, like, we did look into everything. It's like my kid wants to ride his bike to school, I just say no, because I said so. As opposed to discussing with them, well, it would be nice that I don't have to drive you, but you could also get killed. Right. That kind of concept. And Because I'm a carpet cleaner, not a, you know, a doctor right. of any sort. So. <laughs> <laughs> but but that, that's exactly the point, because we're not just saying based on a gut feeling. We're, make, we're making this recommendation based on research, based on the fact that I know you don't wear your helmet, and that freaks me out too, and that, you know, yeah. those types of things, that's exactly why. And, it, and again, it, these are gonna be public documents, and everybody needs to see that. We had, some of the decisions may be hard decisions, we've talked about that, but that we looked at everything. Right. You know, and one of the reasons why, you know, Dr. Crawford said, the decision was made to kind of bring this committee together is to avoid that issue of, all right, we're doing this because that's it. And if we make the information available to everybody, then we'll at least be able to say, we put it in there. We looked at that. We checked that out. And this is why we made the decision, because the, the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. Well, so I, I think, too, that when, when you look right. at that, when, yes, you look, Joanne. when you look at that document, ideally what you want the board to be able to do is have every piece of information to make their decision in that document. There should be literally nothing that the board should have to do other than read that document to to make the decision. So I, you know, that's why we need to make sure we're we're uniform with it. So I'm right, right. So. When, when, when we hand these recommendations to the board of education, we're the homework doers. Mm -hmm. We've done our homework, both on the pro side and the con side. We've made the tough decisions. We've come up with the recommendations. They're the ones that have to make the ultimate tough decision. They're the ones that have to make that. We're just simply making the recommendation. They're the ones that are making the decision. But they'll all be uniform. They'll be researching each decision that we're making. It's not just a gut decision or it's just, well, my neighbor thinks that's a good idea. Um, it's, you know, it's research-based on top of number, you know, data-driven, what we've looked at from the numbers, what we've, you know, heard from, and, and there will be a person piece in there. You know, we're gonna need to listen to our, our, our administrators, um, both at the central office level and at the building level, and hear what they have to say, and what what's their vision, what, you know, what does that look like? That's important too, um, but we definitely have to have that data piece in there, we have to have the research piece in there, um, and I think if we can be uniform, it's just gonna make it transparent, it's gonna, you know, it's it's gonna put some time on us, but that's the whole idea of why we're here. We're really <coughs> workers, okay? Um, all right. So I guess what I'm actually gonna ask is for a um, a vote on whether or not we agree with the white paper um, idea of putting together a transparent report for each subcommittee that will have. Um, the a rubric which will have both positive and negative um, long-term effects and um, research and data included. What do you think? Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So that'll be the model that we'll use for, as we go on. Eric, thank you for so explaining just, that. Just one other piece of clarification. We would probably also, when we do this, come up with 
the standard format too, right? Yes. They're going to say, that, there's the topic, here's the positive, here's the next, you know, so everyone, so maybe next that's, week that's we, the, next yeah. you list out and then actual the table of contents. That's why, that's why we're doing that now, so before we break up into our yeah. groups, we yeah. know what we're trying to, what, what, where the blanks were. I think it'll just make it easier, don't you think, mm -hmm. as then as we start to throw that in? Is it going to be, like you're saying, positive and negatives, but is it going to be like number of staff required, amount of money spent? Like it's going to be specific, right? Yes. We're not going to, because I don't want to like, you know, right. present it and be like, well, here's positive and negative, but you didn't tell us how much. Right. No, no, John, that's a good point. We, we've got to, you know, there's going to be some gathering of information. You know, a lot of the things that we looked at on the facilities, like Kathy said, we need people to do it. We need to bring staff back. So if we're going to run that or do that or we want to see that or we value that, then we need, we need staff to do that. Osmosis or like the little elves aren't coming in. One of the reasons why the building is really is they have that the utility costs. Cost. Yeah, the <laughs> utility costs, yeah. I know. That's why, that's why I like when we, if we come down and we say we want staff, budget, all that stuff. If we narrow down each of those subcategories in that meeting and say this is what we want in each subcategory, every committee knows that your white paper better have staff involved, better have a budget involved in it. If it doesn't, yeah. you got to find it. Right. You, know, you got to find that info. Right. So, and it's going to, and, and you know, I don't want anybody to think, well, wait a minute, I didn't sign up for that part of it. <laughs> I was just a brainstormer person or whatever. You know, there are going to be, when we form these teams, there are going to be people on each of these teams that are going to be, you know, helpers. Ed and I are going to be floating back and forth. Um, there, you know, we're going to look at different people's expertise and levels, and we're going to be able to bring in people from the building. You know, Kathy asked about, you know, are we going to talk to Kevin? We definitely are going to talk to Kevin Love. We want to talk to um, Vinny De La Rosa, our athletic director. I mean, there's certain people, you know, we need to talk to the building principals. As I have said to Dr. Crawford, um, to make sure that he lets the leadership team know that everyone will have their day. Because we're making some pretty big decisions, and there's a lot of stakeholders and a lot of players, and I'm not, myself, willing to make that without giving people's voice an opportunity because they're the people that are working with their kids gang you know so um okay i think we did an amazing job tonight i hope that you're starting to see that we're kind of going in a, in a good direction i'd like to thank stephen for the technology update um saturday we'll be doing the visitations to the high schools the middle schools the ebenezer building because we want to see these amazing servers and um, the bus garage. Um, so if you're able to go, we'll be going from 9 until 2. I will be there at 9 a.m., even though I'm going to be chaperoning post-prom before. Okay, <laughs> so I might feel a little tired, but I will be there, right at your window. Um, so if you're coming, if you could just let us know before you leave, just so that we can get a lunch count. I know that some of you have had conflicts with some of these days, and Saturdays are hard. If there's something specific that we can do to help you see something that you need to see, if you let um, us know, we will do our best to try to arrange something. I can't guarantee it, but I can I can certainly try. You can always see in the future, too, a makeup day or maybe we pick in one elementary school and high school and brought a secondary tour or just a couple of things, too, to help them catch up. And I think as we delve in, we may say, hey, remember, I saw something, I, I want to get back over and, and, and see that. And, um, and a big shout out to Joe Farr for making that happen and Kevin Love for getting us on there for a little bit. Of I don't know, someone else seemed to make it happen more than Joe. We're going to see that Akita and then. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. Every, our historian. Yes. And Jim, our historian, was able to tell us about every building. The so history of it has so what you have to do every is update, every other question. Let's jot down questions. Because yeah. I won't be there. Yeah. Um, He's got a special graduation he'll be at for his niece and goddaughter. All right. Just can I throw one more Absolutely. thing? I'm uh, probably preaching to the choir here. So let's not forget Tuesday, big day. I know uh, if you don't make it there early and it gets near dinner time, you're thinking my vote won't matter. Tell your friends and family about it too. Um, I think it's very important that we do get as many people out as we can either support the incumbents or support new people that are running, and support the budget, all that. I just, if you're a question about, I've got lawn signs if anyone wants them, come over to my house that say, uh, you know, 
vote next Tuesday? Yeah. Um, that they vote next Tuesday. Now, I wasn't going to mention the Winchester Barbecue tomorrow at 4 but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, there's no sign that I I think all you guys remember DPC purchase signs that go up and say, West Side got to vote the best place to raise kids, get out and vote Tuesday. I've got, I collected as many as I could find last year afterward. So if anyone wants one, text me or message me, I'll get them to you. Um, I'll be putting them out tonight, probably while I drive around. Perfect. So. Awesome. Thank you, Ed. Thanks to Rotary for the great chicken barbecue tonight. Didn't have to go. We sold out. We have to go tomorrow either, so awesome job. All right, thank you, folks. I hope that it's starting to come together. Um, I, I, I hope that it is. All right, thanks. We'll see you Saturday. If we won't see you.